Leo Marchand is the greatest swimmer in the world, and today I'm breaking down all of his strokes, sharing the good, the bad, the ugly, what you can learn from it. We're going to break down his underwater swimming, his butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle. Let's go ahead and get right into it, starting with his underwaters. Amazing streamline. There he is right there. We're going to look at this in slow motion. Look at the streamline. The dolphin kick actually starts with the hands. It's a total body undulation, pointing the toes. Look at that, all the way to 15 meters. He does it on his front side, on his back side for backstroke. Incredible. Now let's go ahead and transition that into the butterfly stroke. Now immediately you see how low he is to the water. When you take the breath, that's one of the things he does really well. He rides high in the water. Here it is from the underwater view. I'm actually going to pause it on the way back. He's coming into the turn here at the 400 ion. This is in slow motion. Let's go ahead and look at what he's doing really well. So great body extension. This is his body. Now, if you see his hands where they're set up, that's the initial catch. And it's at a shoulder width right there. You can see where his shoulders are and the hands press just outside the shoulders. That's really, really good. Now, the next thing I want you guys to pay attention to is how he's pressing his chest down. The chest is coming down. That's fantastic. I'm going to do it in red so you can see that. So the chest is being pressed down, which is going to make the hips go up. And that's why he's so good at the 200 butterfly, because the hips are riding high. If this is the water line, his body's riding on top of the water. I mean, that's not realistically the water line. It's probably more like that. So if you look at that higher red line that I drew, basically half his body, or at least trying to get half of the body above the surface of the water. And that's critical if you're trying to swim fast. And Leon Marchand does an incredible job and maintaining his body position in the butterfly. We saw it above the water, how he breathes. Let's go ahead and watch this here again. There it is on the breath, wow. Just look at that. Let me go back five seconds and then we'll replay that so you can see it. And I'm gonna pause it right on the first breath. Right there. You can see the eyes. I don't know if you can see that on the eyes right here. Let me, oh my, I can zoom in. Look at that, we're getting fancy here. Wow, right there, you can see where his eyes are. And his, the water lines here and his chin is right above the line. If you notice how his hands are exiting the water, his thumbs are basically facing the water all the way through the recovery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to zoom back out and I want you to pay attention to that. How his hands basically recover with the thumbs facing the water very, very close to the surface of the water. Because if you come too high out of the water in butterfly, your legs are going to sink. And we saw that, and that's not going to help you out. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. I'm going to zoom out for you guys right there. And let's play it. Here we go. Look at the hands. Beautiful. Actually, you guys couldn't see that. I'm going to go back a little bit more so you can see it. Here it is underwater. Pay attention to what we just talked about. Beautiful stroke. So clean, so effortless. It looks like he's not even trying. All right, let's get into the backstroke now. There's the underwater dolphin kick. Now, when you're looking at his backstroke, he's doing a lot of things right. Let me move the screen over there. You can see he's got a great body position. I'm going to pause it. There's the head. Eyes are looking at the ceiling. Good pointing the toes. His legs are almost straight, very minimal knee bend. A lot of mistakes swimmers make is they bend their knees too much. He's doing this really well. We're also going to talk about some things he's not doing so well. Now, backstroke is arguably his weakest stroke. If there is such a thing when you go 402 in the IM and you're the greatest swimmer of all time, not of all time, in 2023, you're the greatest swimmer. Correction, Michael Phelps is the greatest swimmer of all time. How dare I say that? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. But when you notice his backstroke, he's entering the water a little bit narrow on the catch. Do you see that? So there's this invisible line that cuts through the middle of your body, and you don't want to cross that midsection. He's a little bit narrow on the entry. You can see it here in slow motion, and he doesn't get into the catch as quickly as some of his competitors. Now, when he is in the water, hard to see here, he has the early vertical forearm, and yes, that does apply in backstroke as well as freestyle. If you think about backstroke, it's kind of like freestyle, but on your side. These long axis strokes, you're rotating. So let's clear that. Pay attention to where the hand entry is now. So you can see that I'm going to draw the, the midsection right here, cutting through his back. That red line is that invisible line, freestyle, backstroke, long axis stroke. You cannot, you cannot pass that. That's your spine rotating across that axis. Now he is a little bit narrow if you look at where the hand is, it's very minor. 
you know, I'm guilty of being way more narrow than that. But definitely right here, this entry is a little narrow. It would probably benefit entering, maybe not that far, but just a little bit further out because you get into the catch and you can get a deeper catch more quickly. That's something that Michael Phelps has been able to master and why Michael Phelps actually outsplits Marshawn on the backstroke in the IM. So I'm going to clear the drawing. Let's go ahead and watch this in slow motion. You can see where that hand is entering, especially that one by the lane line. You can see he's a little bit too narrow. Long axis stroke, he's very tall, very skinny, moving through the water. He's very long in the water, I should say. There are definitely swimmers taller, but you want to feel like you're swimming long. You want to have an increased distance per stroke. Head position, amazing. Hip rotation, very good. Strong. Finish is a little soft, actually. But yeah, let's go into the breaststroke here. Now, breaststroke, look at a few things he's doing. Absolutely fantastic. Number one, streamline. Look at this streamline. It is incredible. Every stroke starts and stops with streamline. It's incredible how good he is at returning to the streamline position. Eyes are looking down. Legs are narrow. Toes are pointed. Fingertips are a little bit loose, but he's, he's basically there. Watch this. Look at the streamline. Start and finish. Pull, kick, glide. Pull, kick, glide. And you can actually see... When his hands return, his hands are actually overlapping and touching each other on their way back to streamline. This is something that even the best swimmers in the world aren't good at doing. He is fantastic at doing this specific skill. You can see his hands, they literally come back together. And also from this angle, we can really see, look at the width of his kick. Do you see how wide his knees are? His knees never go wider than the widest point of his body which is his shoulders. I'm going to go ahead and draw that a little bit better than what I just drew right there. So look at the width of his shoulders and look at the width of his knees. This is like the box of resistance, right? Because the water is 800 times more dense than air. And if you want to swim faster, you have to decrease the amount of drag that you have. And he's incredible at doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and clear. Look at the width of his knees. Boom. And we'll see it right here is the pull out. Let me get out of the way. Wow, did you see that? Here, watch it again in slow motion. We're going to play in slow motion. There's a streamline, dolphin kick, good pull. Look how in line his body is. I mean, talk about streamline. Uh, this is Carson Foster in the lane next to him. There he is right there. Both of these guys have incredible pullouts. He is a little loosey-goosey. Uh, no, not that kind of goose. He's a little bit loosey-goosey on the hand position you can see his hands could probably be pressed against his body a little bit more a little bit added resistance there he could probably go this is the second 50 breaststroke in a 400 im so he's probably really tired however look at the quality of the distance he has and one thing i noticed he, he pulls his hands up then he kicks he lifts his head up a little bit early look at his head and now he lifts his head up he's floating a lot of resistance right there he could keep his head down just a little bit longer but it's immaculate. Look at this efficiency. Both of these guys, incredible breaststrokers, but Leon Marchand on the breaststroke. Wow, that is what I'm talking about. Look at the quality of that streamline. You can see every stroke. His fingertips are open up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and, whoop, can go back here. Pause it on the breaststroke. Right there, nope, right there. Right there, nope, <laughs> oh God right there okay you can see his fingers are actually open a little bit now the amount that his fingers are open is it needs to be a little bit more controlled now when you're swimming you get the most power when your hand is comfortable if you look at my hand right now this is where you get the most power if your hands are open any wider than that you're gonna have water slip through if your hands are completely cupped like this you're decreasing the surface area Having a little bit of separation is great. Go ahead and try that push on the table in front of you with your hand. You feel the most power when you're comfortable like this. Not when you're like this, and certainly not like this in the water. So keep an eye on that, and then we'll see how that compares in his freestyle stroke as well. There's his freestyle, and one of the things that is so amazing when you watch a top-level swimmer like this is they make it look so easy. He's going for a stroll in the park. He's not even trying. He is just having a good time. There he is. Look at that. It's like he's not even trying. Now, I want to really pay attention to his turns because even in freestyle, it's so important to have a good technique. 
We're going to talk about that weird thing he's doing with his hand, but let's admire this flip turn. This is the 400 IM. Look at these dolphin kicks. This is when he broke the world record. Underwater, underwater, underwater. That's insane. Underwaters like that take an insane amount of breath control and training. And you've probably seen the best swimmers in the world do it off the walls, off the pullouts. And I've been training using AeroFit, as you see on the screen, to do exactly that. Or at least I try to do that. And so AeroFit is the official breathing trainer and partner of my swim pro and you're going to see the difference in a few weeks because your diaphragm and all the muscles are going to get engaged and here's how it works you start with a street a three step test to get your baseline and then the app is going to walk you through a personalized training program and the workouts are going to take you less than 10 minutes per day to complete with the training with the breathing trainer and it's a revolutionary product so if you guys are ready to take your breathing to the next level you got to check out the link in the description and use the code MYSWIMPRO to get 15% off your AeroFit order. And make sure you check it out. It's amazing partner, breath training, and maybe you too can have incredible underwaters just like we're seeing here on the screen. So let's get into his freestyle. I did mention something about his catch that I want to dig into here in slow motion. Let's go ahead and pause it. I do not know what is going on with his left hand. Like... That is clearly a problem right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. If I don't even think I need to zoom in. It looks like he's got a claw. Maybe you can get a claw on the screen. That is what I'm looking at. It's only with one of his hands. So now that you've identified it, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Play this. This catch is immaculate. That right there. But what is going on with this claw? Let me pause this other hand just so you can see it. There's the claw. I mean, you're not getting the early vertical forearm with a claw, right? You're decreasing the surface area. But look how amazing this is on the other side. I mean, he enters the water head position really good. Body position really good. This arm is extended really good. The wrist is a little bit bent. Maybe that'll develop over time. But let's go ahead and clear that. I want to show you the early vertical forearm. It's happening so fast. I think I need to show you it in slow motion. I'm going to go back a little bit so you can see it in slow motion. Wow, look at that. There it is in slow motion. Pause. So I'm going to put this in yellow. This is the torso and back. And now he's starting to get that early vertical form. It's happening so fast. It's actually a little bit blurry underwater. But you can see this is why he's the best swimmer in the world. This is why he swims so much faster and doesn't get tired. It's because of how efficient his pull pattern is. And of course, the training and everything else that he's doing. But let's go ahead and watch this in super slow motion. I'm gonna play this for you guys. Frame by frame. <laughs> it's really difficult to see from this angle, but you can almost see it. That's what the arm is doing. That's what it looks like. He's kind of like mid stroke. But what that does is it allows you to pull the water behind you. And the more leverage you can get with the early vertical forearm, I'll go ahead and put that on the screen the faster you're gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna draw it right here on the side. So let's imagine, you know, this is the catch, right? And that's the hand, right? And then this is the body, and this is the torso, the legs. And then this is the other arm. You can see my beautiful stick figure, right? This is the surface area you have to pull. This is the hand right here. And so what you wanna do is you wanna increase the surface area right there of which you have to pull. So let me get rid of this drawing. Now watch him do it in a little bit faster. He's doing it on both hands. Just ignore the claw on the other hand. You can see how the elbow pops up. This is why he's so fast. This is the secret to speed. And he's able to apply it on every single stroke, every single 50, and he has the training to back it all up. So it's really an incredible uh, thing to be witnessing right now because he is the greatest swimmer in the world leading into the Paris Olympic Games. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And if you want to see a full story on how Leon Marchand ascended to be the greatest swimmer in the world, make sure you check out that video. I'll see you over there and happy swimming.